Happy Saturday, everybody. This is the Creative Quarantine Springfield. Wow, y'all, this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I'm, I think this is day nine. The days are starting to slip away. I'm, I'm having problems keeping up with the count. So yeah, I think we are day nine, if I'm not mistaken, but things are moving along. We are finding our way. We are still being faced with certain technical challenges, but we are meeting them the best that we can. All of the artists are in the studios working. Everybody's trying to get things going. Um, I, I'm, I'm just anxious for folks to start posting their work. So I'm waiting patiently to get photographs from all the artists of the pieces that have been completed. So far, things are shaping up rather well. Uh, we got our first set of postings from Ryan Mary, and I will share those with you, but I'll share them with you throughout the show just so you can have a peek, a sneak peek at what's been happening. Yeah, so don't think we're not working, y'all. Ryan Murray has put up four pieces. This is not a race. This is just so you can start seeing the actual creations that are coming through the artists. Uh, if you've been fortunate enough to watch us most of last week, you saw us at various stages beginning things. What's happening, my co-partner? What's up? You know what? I saw you rocking your hat, because you know I had this on, because I'm like, you know what? This is pajama day, not getting out of them. But then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can't have you styling and profiling without me. So well, there you go. Down. There you go. We gotta we gotta come up with something. You know, we are in we in studio mode, y'all. We're not dressing up. It's the same pop. In case y'all been wondering if Poncho wears the same clothes every day. This is my warmest hoodie. And if you notice it's advertising for Habitat for Humanities. 
That's uh, right. So I, I, had to, I had to, I had to come. I had to come. I had to go get my hat. Ain't nothing wrong with that, girl. So how you, you holding go. up? How you holding up? Oh, I see you got stuff on the floor in the background. You must be getting ready to mix it up. Oh, I got all kind of stuff going on. I, I finished that piece. So that, piece is, that, that piece looks bigger than I thought it did on the easel. Looks it's like a big it. one. It's a big piece. It's a big piece. So uh, she's all done and looking absolutely fabulous. So I decided well, I'm going to do three You more. can save her for when you do your presentation. I can't wait to see what you've done to her. Right. Uh, so, we got a person that's in the studio. I know early, we got so. Frankie. Frankie's up and ready to go. Look at him, Frankie. <laughs> Frankie, hey, and Frankie smiling all bright like he ain't had like he had plenty of sleep. What's up with that? Oh uh, no. Nah, um, it might be that yesterday <laughs> he did. No, no, no. I got my little man with me, Jacob, and so, you know, having my kid here. And all I, I all I was trying to do was. It's hard when you're in an apartment trying to keep him quiet, and he's yeah. already. <laughs> well, you know this is real live TV, man. You don't That's have right. to. Keep I'm, I'm well aware of that. That's yeah. why I'm like secluded. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I'm working on. I wanted to show you something I'm working on. The, you guys must have about five, six, seven pieces out there open. Um not completed yet so i have this one here can you see it very very nice yeah see if you can center it a little better frankie there you go right in there oh wow that looks nice man uh -huh. the thing is when i was when i started this one i started sketching it uh it was it was in protest of the um Oh, the most recent killing. There was a recent killing and protesting it. So I had a cop on his knee, mm -hmm. taking a knee, and um, and did some protesters. But the good thing about it, and then I wanted to symbolize different colors, you know, clasping their hands and showing some kind of unity. Yes. Uh, you know, um, are you able to see these hands in the background? I see us. I see a couple of pair of hands, but uh, no, it's really shaping up nice, Frankie. The ones in the middle, you can see, but do you see the? I see the hand holding the big thing. Oh, in the I see the, yeah, I see that. Okay, that's what I wanted to because I'm kind of and I'm doing protesters down here, so I'm in the middle. And unfortunately, with all the craziness, I have material to work on. Uh, new, new material, subject matter to do. So, is that on canvas, Frankie? This is on canvas. Okay. And fantastic. So, what I, is that? Is that acrylic on canvas, or are you still using pastels on canvas? No, no, this is acrylic. Oh, all fantastic! Right. Yeah, this is all acrylic. Um, but. And then I'm doing the pitchforks and stuff like that. Um, so by the end of this piece, it took a darker turn or is taking a darker turn, unfortunately. I think that's great, man. I, I like to see the direction of it. So uh -huh. is this something that's going to be uh, something you're going to put some more time in on the next week or so? Yeah. Well, make sure you're make sure you're videoing your work when you're not on screen with us. Make sure you're um, videoing, time lapsing, all of those kind of things. You know what I'm having trouble with? I have so many videos here, but uploading them, I do. I must have uploaded like four of them already. Well, I mean, that's part of the game. Is we're gonna have to? I, I sent you a special link. That you can mm -hmm. use to upload those videos. So far, the artists have been using that link, mm -hmm. and I've received everything that they've sent me. So take the time and find that share file link that I sent you, right. and try it again. And uh, if you're having problems, you can give you can give us a, you can give me a call. Give us a call. I've talked to a couple of artists that were having some issues. Yeah. Okay. And so and, and keep those videos to like twenty to twenty five minutes, and we should be fine. But mm -hmm. we saw you in the studio, so we thought we would check in with you to see what's happening. Uh, right. You know, we're going to check back in with you later and get the show started. So uh, you can check. Hey, slide back in the studio once a couple more of the artists are in and we will get you on the screen. I sure will, man. Stay safe. 
All we're right. Gonna, yeah, we're, 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 all, we're all as safe as we can be right now. We're in our studios. We're in our studios. Nobody can get up in here. I'm in pajama mode. So I'm That's right. No, no you need her in pajama mode. She said she's keeping hers on. I, I don't even own pajamas, but I'm this in pajama is my, mode. This is my work hoodie. Poncho in work hoodie mode. That's right. Yeah, exactly. See, yeah, the work hoodie. There you go. There you I, go. I, 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 real quick, though, I don't. I, I'll try not to brag here, but I did receive my lighting. Woo! Great, fantastic. Yeah. And that's a tripod too now, so you can attach your device to that. Right. You can put your phone on that. You can put your phone and your iPad on that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are out there watching, now you see the challenges that we face with Frank technology. He was going to have to Frank read grabbed those. his head and said, oh, I'll look at the instructions. <laughs> I'm just gonna go paint now. Frankie says, "Stop giving him stuff." I can't take it. Frankie's like, "I can't take it." All right, well, I, I thought Frankie fell out on the floor when the camera started spinning. Okay, Frankie is in the house trying to keep it going. I just love Frankie's expression. I'm sorry, I love his expressions because Frankie be like, "Woo!" <laughs> So uh, what's up with you today, Miss uh, Miss Cutler? You know, just keeping it real. You and I are just talking, troubleshooting, putting things together, trying to make everything flow, uh, flow easily, uh, or or not easily, but flow in, a, in, in at least a in at least the direction of the stream. You there know, you we've had a lot of upstream flowing. It's been uh it's been interesting, but we've been keeping up with it the best that we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, most of our challenges are technical, right? <laughs> we're yeah. always uh, ju uh, we're juggling between streaming issues and technical artist issues. <laughs> artist, artist issues, but you know so, what? It's we are, but we are we are tackling it and taking it on. That's right. We're making it happen. Artists are doing their thing, and uh, you know we're rolling right along. It's I mean. Hey, we've hit day nine. Day nine. And you're talking about live streaming for nine days. Hey, that's, hey. that's a feat. That's, yeah, that's a major that's, feat. And we've right. made that out pretty good. So we're going to keep it flowing. I'm going to give the first presentation for the day. See if I can do this without blowing up my computer. Because you know these computers are being tested. <laughs> I know. Well, mine, mine have been tested for a long time. So Yeah, but <laughs> this, this extra video and stuff is like, this is what are you doing here? <laughs> All right, let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Hey guys, from Rolling Heights Studio, it is day three Aww. of the quarantine. Mm. I've been up for a while. I'm in the studio. Um, as again, it's cold. I'm warming the studio up. Um, check check the weather. Weather is um. I don't know, 48 degrees, I think it is. So it's about 38 in here. Um, so I'm not going to chill off. I'm getting ready to uh, light my chair eye. And um, light my Palo Santo, as usual. And drink my coffee. Mm -hmm. Out of my plastic cup and review what I've already done from yesterday. So I know I have some mugs to do. I'm starting to think about the faces that I'm going to be putting on um, some of the pieces that I'm doing right now. Um, uh, or preparing the faces, I should say. Um, but for right now, um, I'm just going to chill. Chill on this rainy day. It's Sunday. You know, this is a day of rest, but it's also a day of uh, meditation and thinking. It's good. All right. So I'll see you guys at 4 o'clock um, today. And ciao.
Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Just getting ready. Today is day two of the quarantine. I'm looking around. I just walked into the studio. I don't even know what time it is. I've been in here for probably 20 minutes. I got to sleep in, so I don't do a lot of sleeping in, but I did it today and it was nice. Um, it's cold, so I'm warming up the studio right now. So knocks the chill off um, with the kiln on for about 20 minutes. Oh, there's my scarf. I was looking for a black scarf earlier and I just found it. But this one looks just as good. Um, so I am going to be um, throwing some pieces today. Got some mugs to throw because I'm going to be doing BAM um, in February. So I'm pre preparing for that. Um, doing healthy stuff like drinking in my Karen's Day Starter. A smoothie, blueberry, strawberry, banana, almond milk smoothie. It's good. No, it's really good. Um, and uh, of course, the beautiful milky caramel color in here is my coffee. Uh, and no, I don't drink out of my pottery cups. Uh, because they are uh, usually not here with me. They're usually sold and gone. <clears throat> so I've um, got my sage going, my Palo Santo, my Chorai going, and uh, I'm just going to uh, chill for a few minutes and meditate and um, figure out where I'm going to travel to in my day. But while I am traveling, I am going to be listening to if anybody ever has this question, I'm going to be listening to DJ Zion from SoundCloud, one of my favorite, favorite DJs from New York City. And also, we went to college together, so she's cool on all levels. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Ciao. Hey, guys, it is day two of the Springfield Artist Quarantine. Uh, just waking up. I'm usually pretty quiet in the morning. Right now, uh, it's cold inside of the studio, so my studio doesn't have central heat, so I have to warm it up with the kiln. So I turn it on for uh, about 20 minutes to knock the chill off, and uh, I put on, um, uh, what do you call those things, long johns to keep warm. And uh, I sit here and meditate and look around to see what I need to do. And this is my time where I have coffee and smoothies. And during this quarantine, they've asked us to, <clears throat> you know, be healthier, eat healthier, walk. So this is really not coffee, but it is the Karen's Day Starter. So, this is the smoothie. Mm. It's good. So, and then, uh, of course, I have to have coffee. <clears throat> I have uh, my coffee in my quart container. Um, one, just out of pure laziness, I... Uh, don't feel like washing mugs because I create too many mugs to bring into the house to wash, to bring back out here. So if I have a quart container, it's just easier. It's cleaner. <laughs> but I drank on this all day. So it's four cups of coffee in the quart container. Um, and I just sip on it. I love coffee. First thing in the morning. I love European coffee. Um, so too bad I'm not over in Europe. <clears throat> but uh, I have a really good coffee company that I go to called Blanchard's. And it is so yummy. Yummy. But um, that's it. So I'm just doing some, uh, you know, clearing out my energy inside of the studio. So usually I do some sage and some Palo Santo. Uh, inside of the studio just to air it out, bring some liveliness into it. 
I also listened to one of my um, best girlfriends um, from New York. Uh, she has a, and she's a DJ. And so she has a place where I go and log in called SoundCloud so that I can listen to the uh, monthly or weekly uh, session that she does, which is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, um, and while I'm listening to that, also, I usually am trying to figure out how I'm going to triage my day. So right now, I was working on four angels from last year. So I was doing an angel collection. I have four angels that I have to finish putting together. Well, I have to throw them first. Well, I've thrown two, three, three. So I have four or five to do. Um, that are men requests that I have to finish up and have some commissions that I need to finish um, for this year. So usually January is a slow, quiet time. So I'm glad that I'm in the quarantine to allow me to think about things that I need to do for the new year. Oh, that one cracked in that. Oh, that's cool. This is Palo Santo. You guys smells up really, really good. Love Palo Santo. And and the last thing that I put in here, just to make me remember Africa a lot, is <clears throat> I do some true Love the true So it gets um it's not really smoky, it's actually just a really light soap smoke because everything burns out fairly quickly and it just leaves the essence of what was um, the smell it was burning. <clears throat> so getting that all set and then after that I just kind of sit here. Day nine, and I'm feeling fine. Yes, we are in the grind. No, I didn't mean for that to rhyme. It's just to kind of move them in the day. Um, we are still um, making it through. Artists are doing the best they can with what we have as far as technology is concerned and trying to meet the technology requirements. That's probably the biggest challenge we have right now. Not only the, the, the technology challenges, but, you know, the artists having to adjust to giving presentations is the biggest challenge we've had. So right now, everybody's muscling through, doing the best they can. I think we've given you a pretty good overview of what we're doing. We've had plenty of situations where we've had multiple artists working and able to put them all on the screen at the same time. So we're looking forward to trying to find other ways to bring that to you. We're still waiting for artists to send videos of some of their productions. So um, until we figure the learning curve, <laughs> out on making sure that those things can be transferred and, and, and all that. That's kind of what we're going to be dealing with. So right now, I feel pretty good for day nine. Um, getting a little bit of rest, which is the most important thing for me. Um, I, I get a little complacent with my subject matter, so I think I'm ready to move to something different. Um, that's going to be pretty much uh, what I focus on in the week coming is I want to start incorporating some of my larger projects and start preparing some of the larger projects. I started this first week off with just prepping and uh, getting uh, paper situated and coming up with backgrounds and working with texture. And so now I'm ready to move into expanding on those pieces. Those pieces are all eight and a half by 12, which is a good size. To be honest with you, those sizes match my scanner. 
<laughs> so what I can do with images that are eight and a half by 12 is that I can scan those things at 600 DPI versus 200 or 300 DPI, which allows me to almost double the size of the images, which comes in very handy with my G clay printer. So I'm always thinking of ways to utilize imagery. Not only that, because I'm online, I get inquiries all the time for images, image usage, whether it be licensing arrangements, book covers, uh, a multitude of uses. So I'm, I pride myself on building a pretty extensive image library. So those are coming to, some of the thoughts that come along. The, the quarantine can stimulate a lot of different things. Uh, right now, things are moving very smoothly. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get in here and get some spontaneous ink drawing done today. Maybe that's what I'll work on today so you guys can see what that process looks like. Okay, so periodically, I like to uh, take out my super black speedball ink. And do some what I call very spontaneous ink drawings. And so how they evolve, I use a, hmm, I might have to use a different ink. This ink is already kind of sticky. New supplies. I have another one. Super Black is a very dense ink. Uh, it's uh, super black, but it, it also can clog up that India ink. Here's another one I use called uh, Higgins Waterproof India Ink. I'm going to see if that runs a little smoother than the, uh, the Speedball ink right now. Now I need to get me some supplies. Yeah, that looks like it's flowing a little bit better. So the important thing is to make sure you use these long hair brushes. Um, the longer the hair, the more ink and paint it'll hold. A lot of my artwork has this characteristic thin line trait. This is my favorite brush right here, but you can see it's starting to bend up a little bit, so I might need to replace that. But these longer bristle brushes will work just as well. So the whole key with this is to do totally spontaneous And right now that is not dark enough for me. So I need to shake this ink up a little bit or I might just have to do the whole thing in the broke down since I've already started. Live TV y'all, live TV. Let's see here. Seems like my ink has been setting for a minute. Let me see if that changed it up a little bit. Okay. If it doesn't give me good coverage, then I will, uh, yeah, that's not that great of coverage. Well, hell, I'm going to do the whole thing with this density. How's about that? No, it's running, so that's not going to do what I wanted to do. All right, so I might have to get in here and do a little mix of inks. You know, this, this, this art thing is a, you're always inventing. So I'm going to combine some, that sticky super black with the Higgins, which was running thin. Let's see what it'll do. Since we are experimenting. I 
as you can see, that is covering a little bit better. So again, with this stuff, I'm trying my best not. Well, there is no pre-drawing here. And my goal is to get myself into a little stride where I can create some spontaneous pieces that are coming straight from in my imagination. I had this pre-selected background. And now I'm just going into it with this Indian ink and making sure I make nothing but spontaneous eyes. I started doing these probably a few years ago. Um, I was just playing around in some ink and getting used to using different types of brushes. I wanted to practice my inking. Um, doing thin lines is something that I've um, I've learned how to do over the years, and the whole idea was just to keep on playing with it and playing with it. And sometimes you get some things you want, sometimes you get some things you don't, but the whole idea is to keep it moving. Uh, I do all a lot of pieces that are these, I call ancestral pieces that are faces. Yeah, I'm moving really cold right now, so I have not warmed up yet. But the whole idea is to warm up and just be spontaneous. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it going. Where things intersect, I'm going to let it do it. Sometimes trying to narrate while painting is difficult and a challenge. So I think I'm just going to allow myself to get into a flow here with this ink. And as you can see, I'm trying to, it's not pre thought out, it is coming straight from my imagination. This ink is still not as black as I would like it to be, but I can. Um, I might just need to buy me some new ink. And as you can see, after a while, it's like, well, where do things relate? My goal is to continue building an image and to play with this. Have a little fun with it. Again, these thin bristle, bristle brushes hold a lot of ink, so that helps with uh, the flow. Helps me hold a thinner line for a longer period of time. If you are a perfectionist and you're worried about making mistakes, this process will frustrate you because this is not going to allow that kind of control. So what I do is I try to just get myself in a space where I'm flowing. I'm 
Because once I start flowing, things will start coming together. If I run into a problem in one area, I just move to another area. Now this thin brush will allow you to do, get up right up on the tip of it if you need to. It also is pretty uh, user friendly when trying to do circles, but remember, I'm working from imagination here, so I'm actually drawing that circle freehand with my mind. Nothing here is drawn out. And I like the fact that it's not mechanical looking circles. So as you see, I'm just flowing at this point. I'm not even worried about where things relate. I needed something more spontaneous to work on today. Since this week, I've been pretty much focusing on <coughs> doing the texture pieces. I want to break it up by doing some other things. So with this, I'm going to continue to build faces like that little area right there where I was beginning to have an issue with that nose. I'm just going to continue flowing with that. I'll connect something up to that in a second. Now this paper that I'm working on is pretty porous, so it's not the smoothest paper in the world. That could be a little bit of issue when you're working with ink, because you don't want the ink to bleed out. But right now it's holding just enough line for me to do what I need to do. Thing here is just trying to make sure line the lines relate to one another some kind of way. Doesn't look out of place. And this line here where I goofed up, I'm gonna come in here and do something kind of funky and just put like a negative space in there. And this ink is so thin that doing my solid shapes might become a challenge, but I'm not going to worry about that for right now. As long as it's consistent, it's going to be fine. But this technique done with some jet black ink is a very nice technique. And now that I've started filling in a couple of negative areas, I can do that on other areas too. It's 
This is how it's shaping up so far. Remember, I'm being very spontaneous with my lines, my forms. Let's see. Now, right now, I am looking right side up and upside down, but this might be a good chance for me to go and do some things that might be a little uncommon, like create an, another area here. This is all just an exercise in line work and figuring out exactly where I can um, create some different things in this piece that are not expected. I'm leaving my brain open to fill in certain things. No sources, no pre-direction, just line work and a subject, which is my, my faces. And every now and then I connect some things that look related. Uh, the only other problem I have here is trying to keep my, my hand out of an area that's wet <laughs> as I travel around these pieces. But like I'm thinking right in here I can come in and do something even funkier, make a smaller face even there. No rhyme, no reason, just let it flow. So as you can see, if you let yourself go, you can have fun working on pieces like this. It's like a,
Every now and then I might get a little splintered line, which you know drives me absolutely crazy, but then I'll take it and turn it into a dimple in the chin or something, just to keep it moving. Now I'm starting to create some little areas that I can go in and paint black with, like that area right in there. I might do that area right above her lip. Yes, it is easy to get in here and do some stuff and can't get out of it, but that's part of the joy of uh, doing this. At this point, I'm just trying to come up with some nice decorative little patterns that simulate hair and whatever other support things I require. The whole thing with this is you don't want to get to a point where you smudge some ink, you drop some ink, uh, you make a shape that's just too ambiguous that you can't cover. So some of these lines are coming out kind of because of the background. They are breaking up a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I think that uh, on this, my whole exercise is to be as spontaneous as I can be and not to uh, worry about technically what's happening as long as it's fairly consistent.
at this point, you just want to make sure you, you're not allowing fatigue to affect your lines. After you've been at it for about 20 minutes, you start making simple mistakes. And the goal is to try to keep it as consistent as you can keep it. Ain't nothing like getting this far into it and then you drag the sleeve into it. So just trying to be kind because again, I have not stopped yet. So I'm working on areas that might be a little wet. Trying to make sure I don't get caught up and mess up my own flow. As you can see, the more I add, the more complex it gets. And that's the whole goal, is keep the eye traveling. So I need to get me some new ink that covers better. This probably um, has ink that's settled at the bottom. And the thinner parts are the only thing that's left. But uh, it's still just dark enough for me to do this presentation for you. So you can see this whole spontaneous drawing with ink. No preconceived lines. This is an example. This is more of an imagination um, exercise. You know, so many artists are used to working from references nowadays that, you know, I always ask the question, well, what happened?
at this point, I'm busy trying my best not to touch wet ink. Okay, so the process for the, uh, like the purple rains, okay, so the process for the, uh, like the purple rains require So what's going on, Louise? Trying to do lots of things at one time. Wanted to show a little presentation by Kathleen. I was wondering what was going on. I want to show a little presentation by Kathleen. Uh, requires uh, making a sheet. I have shapes I use um, to make those collars or some other kind of bead. Um, so I make a sheet of clay. You'll see the red sheet under me. Anyway, I'm using the experimentation and used uh, clay that's not typically a uh, choice for me, um, told by other polymer clay artists, that particular brain is not so sturdy or strong for our purposes. So anyway, um, when I cut the shape and then folded this to uh, make the large bead, that happened. So that's not going to work. Here's the other one. I thought I could form it around uh, form it around my paintbrush here to keep it from cracking, but it didn't work. I'm going to do another another technique. I'm going to reuse this clay. I'm going to roll it out, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just use it like that. I might just use it like that. And um, and get another pattern going. So let me collect my clay and I'll be right back. So as you can see, the artists are all starting to submit some video. Nice. Which is cool, gives you a better view, a slightly better view of what, they, what they're doing and their thinking process. I'm hoping that in week two, we'll be able to get a lot more videos, a lot, lot, lot more videos. So um, you saw the presentation I did with the Fluid Ink. I'm gonna continue that presentation in a little bit. But what are you doing over there, Louise? Looks like you're just moving cameras around over there. Well, you know, I'm always moving cameras around. Always. Mike, Mike was on one side, now it's on the other side. I, <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know. I, I, I try to keep it moving. I try to keep things going. I, you know, I got caught up in what you were doing because I was going to put a video up, but then I got all caught up in what you were doing and I didn't get the video up. So it doesn't matter. It ain't too late. We can always show some videos. I'm going to play one right now so y'all can see what I've gotten done so far. Oh, okay, there.
So, and since then I finished one more. So this is what we got so far. This is the last, I'm going to say last for right now because I'm moving to some other things, but this is, um, I think the 10th or 11th piece from my faces series. So yes, we've been working. I'm waiting for some other artists to log on so they can uh, share what they're working on. We got a pretty lined up schedule here today. Uh, only one artist we won't see, and that won't be uh, Ness Sheba Maya. She's going to be coming on in the next day or two, having oh. some tech issues. So that's something that we're going to be looking to bring forward in the next couple of days. I'm going to continue with that presentation I was doing in the meanwhile until another artist comes into the studio. So you guys can see what we're working on. Other than that, uh, feel free to keep on logging in all of your comments. And um, I would appreciate that because that gives us a place to go. If this is too ambiguous that you can't cover. So some of these lines are coming out kind of because of the background, they are breaking up a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I think that um, on this, my whole exercise is to be as spontaneous as I can be and not to uh, worry about technically what's happening as long as it's fairly consistent. At this point, you just want to make sure you're not allowing fatigue to affect your lines. After you've been at it for about 20 minutes, you start making simple mistakes. And the goal is to try to keep it as consistent as you can keep it. Ain't nothing like getting this far into it and then you drag a sleeve into it. So just trying to be kind, because again, I have not stopped yet. So I'm working on areas that might be a little wet. Trying to make sure I don't get caught up and mess up my own flow. As you can see, the more I add, the more complex it gets. And that's the whole goal is keep the eye traveling. Well, we got some folks coming into the studio, so we might as well let everybody in. We got Kathleen Anderson, 
We got Karen Clark hey. and Louise Cutler's out there somewhere uh, in, uh, getting things prepared. What's going on with you, Karen? Oh, nothing. I'm just working on, um, I just got a glaze load in. It's at 600 degrees. Um, it's getting a little warm in the studio and I'm working on some teapots, getting them ready for you guys to see color. Very, very nice. We did show your presentation, your diary earlier today. Oh, it wow. It looks like you were smoking marijuana on there, but uh, <laughs> I you know that this is a family show. I really, I really, hmm? what'd you say? You're muted. I really enjoyed it too, but I think I kicked Kathleen out. But you, you did. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I'm pushing buttons. I, I want think. you all to meet um, the tech for the creative <laughs> quarantine show. Yeah, yeah, we got to fix the hands the right direction. Oh, wait a minute. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can go, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pointing down up at you. Hey. <laughs> Let's see if we can get our fingers in the right in the and same my girl, way. I mean, you know, Louise is everywhere. She's setting up another whole camera over here <laughs> with some other stuff on it. So she's about to really get busy. Um uh, take out that? my cool hat because I got hair on my head. Can y'all describe the vibe today? What's the vibe today? Um, you know, my vibe today is, you know, I've just been kind of freestyling, it, you know, just coasting in yeah, my day. I'm kind, of, you know? I'm kind of that way too. I'm kind of like, you know, I'm not pressed. I'm, I'm, I'm I got a good little momentum going. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I could use a little. I could use a shot of energy, just a little teeny bit. Yeah, a little bit. You know, just a little shot of energy, but I'm good where I am. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. Hmm. <laughs> I think I woke up pretty good this morning, you know, the whole pajama day was rocking. I was like, you know what? I'm not changing. I'm gonna brush my teeth and call it a day. That's it. Hey, it day. looks like you got a funky velour purple outfit on, girl. They don't know this pajamas. That's what these are. <laughs> <laughs> these are my pajamas. <laughs> Pull so you, you guys are witnessing real studio life. Yeah. Well, you know, cause my bedroom is like right out. My studio and my bedroom is just like all I do is walk out. Mm. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. What walk is this head right here? I'm loving this head. Oh, this one? It's a glass. It's glass. And I've actually, that's how I molded the, um, the leather on her. I forgot where I got her from. But just was like, oh, this is cool. And so she's been sitting in my studio for a while. But I'm going to show you these. I'm going to actually do it. To me. Is the next time you see it, a uh, current clock would have ca carved that sucker out of clay. Yeah, give me that head. That's cool. This right here, That's I'm going to actually do leather on these. Nice. Yeah, where did you get that from? That's cool. I did this, I did this some years ago. Oh, wow. um, it's out of aluminum mm. and I put it in the corner because I was going to use it like a, as a, a hat rack mm. and so I did one like this and then I did one that's a lamp and so oh, now cool. I was thinking about it in the bed you know this whole creative porn thing has got me thinking so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these I'm going to take this one I'm going to put leather strips mm. along Ooh. the whole thing mm. And I really wish I, I made these more. I wish I ma had made more of these, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's never too late, never too late, never too late. I'm gonna sit it in a corner and and because it fits right in a corner, which is really awesome. So yeah, I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. So mm -hmm. what are you working on today, Karen? Um, It's a chillaxing day. So I am, um, this is where I have to be uh, very meticulous where I place my ink, like poncho. Um, so I'm gonna be iron oxiding this and wax resisting um, and so that I can put color around it. So that's what I'm doing today. Okay, that's I'm gonna have been... to sit and watch this mm -hmm. poncho. I'm gonna have to sit and watch Karen. Do but, it. Yeah, cause what I'm doing is something simple. It's, I'm just showing something, but I'm gonna watch Karen for right now. Okay. Well, 
this is all I'm doing. I'm this is it's just being meticulous. Um, so I'm just coming in here and angling the paintbrush where I need to angle it um, to get the um, the iron on. So basically, um, iron um, iron oxide is just glorified rust. So I actually just put um, water and uh, probably a teaspoon of iron and mix it up. And so you don't need a whole lot um, to do it. You just need a thin coat. And then what I do from that point is um, I have to wipe it off just to make sure that it doesn't have any residual um, iron on there because you don't want that to blister the piece that you're working on. Sometimes it's cool and then other times it's not. So um, this is what I um, said I would do today for the quarantine so um but other than that i've been kind of relaxing all day today and when i say relaxing not just sitting here um doing more relaxing things just finishing up some pieces uh we already know, we already know when you say relaxing it's not most normal people's relaxing right it's just right. Not, it's not put, putting something on the wheel today Right. It's not anything on the wheel today. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Well, not some of tomorrow. I'll do one piece because I have to think about what am I going to do next and so that I can be prepared. Um, so when I am. Well, we got uh, a surprise in the studio. We're going to let her in since she decided. I told oh, her oh, she came in. Who? Hey. Hey, hey there. there. Rosemary. Hey, family. Hey, hey Rosemary. Oh. Hey, y'all. Listen, guys. You got to make a big jug, and you got to put cussin on it. You got to make a big jug that says cussin. Now, uh, ah! now, now, Rosemary, Rosemary, you know, uh, you don't have to talk loud into your device. <laughs> well, I want you to know that this hussy on this thing asked me yesterday, "Where's your mic? Where's your camera?" <laughs> No, and I you, said, you're the one you you I found you smart, uh, <laughs> and you ought to know. I'm so sick to Sarah or whatever, Sarah, whatever her name is. Rosemary, we don't, have, we don't have the we don't have the bleep button, so no, she's fine. I mean, we know we, I, we, we know where all the money's gonna come from. We no, 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 Rosemary. No, I I, I meant to. And, uh, uh, email you back, Rosemary, when you had it on the bottom spelled out. I was like, now does that count? <laughs> no, it does not count. If she did not say it, it does not count. So now I have Ms. Sheba on the floor. She was calling. I said, and I'm going to tell, tell Louise before you tell her. I cussed the day. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so glad to say that I got some things resolved. Um, Pancho, uh, Sheldon's mother knows the computer guy, so she's on her way over to Sheldon up. Or if not, we're going to storm them. And uh, things are um, looking good. So many people um, stopped me today. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. How did you and Michelle make out? Yeah, yeah, we met up today. She came by my studio and picked up her um, tripod and uh, the mask that okay. you gave us. Okay, so does Sutherland have broadband up there? Say that one more time. Sutherland, where she lives up in the mountains, do they have broadband? Is she able to get online? Um, yeah, we, we she have. Has been. Yeah, she's been, her, her, her uh, reception has been pretty good. Okay. You all right. I have a problem with her reception at all. Okay. So I sent out an email uh, uh, giving the update. I uh, I mean, it is with COVID and everything. I'm hoping that when, uh, when y'all finish all this work and you continue to create, that we will be at Art for the Soul Gallery for the year and that I'll be able to fly some of y'all folks out and you do some workshops and see this wonderful valley here that we live in um poncho can tell you about springfield springfield's nice it's a cozy little spot you can get lost in springfield nobody even knows you're there 
<laughs> and you can cover it in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can walk it for sure. You definitely can walk it. I have but walked there. I well, have walked it. Well, you walked to Africa, so you can you yeah. can say you walked anywhere on earth. <laughs> <laughs> walk all of Africa, at least more a portion of it, huh? Well, all right, it's just so a, few, gonna, uh, a few thank countries. You. Well, thank you, uh, Rosemary, for uh, chiming in today. We're gonna let uh, uh, Karen. Let's see. We're gonna let Kathleen take over for a minute since she was up on the schedule and move things along. All right, Kathleen. Okay, so I'm going to. I'm using my cell phone. I'll see how this works. No I, I don't have a, a tripod that um, will support the overhead, so I have mm -hmm. created this um, this little stage, and hopefully that'll work to support the camera while I'm working with my two hands. That's okay. All that's, right. what we're, that's what we're all doing. It's all about creativity. Okay, so this is an ex experiment, right? We're talking experiment. That's what this is all about, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm I'm just going. I'm not going to um, create a cane because it takes too much time. But what I am going to do is show a cane. Um, Lashawn and I are collaborating, he asked me to send him some canes that are indicative of my uh, style. So um, one of the canes I made is uh, a Dinkra symbol. It's called the, um, the Bessie Saka. It is the Saka Kola nuts. And it's Meaning is uh, abundance and prosperity. Here it is. So you see in the center, so this, this one cane is made up of multiple other canes. So I'm going to try and um, get this so that the camera is down. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it dropped. <laughs> Yeah, so I have uh, the tripod that I have doesn't really support uh, overhead. Um, it doesn't support an overhead view. So I have to do it like this. All right. So, um, Bessie Saka, Saka Colonist. So the cane, so you see the center um, white. That's a rolled log. Um, you know, you take clay and you roll it out in a log form. So here's one that um, has a pattern in the center, actually. But this, this one has just the white in the center. And then it's surrounded by brown. And then there's uh, a long brown edge that comes out. And then each one of those brown edges is wrapped in white. And then the white is wrapped in brown. And then I take each one of those four sections and add it to the brown circle in the center. And then I surrounded each of those sections with this green tone and then surrounded that whole thing with uh, turquoise. And then I think there's another green tone in the center and then turquoise again. And then I wrapped it with white. And then I wrapped the white with black. And then I wrapped the black with this orange. So I, I have this cane, it was a really big one when I started. And the um, clay can be reduced. So when the clay is warmed up, and this clay, this particular cane has been setting in a box. I have this um, box, 30 of these big boxes that I store canes in. Some are years old. 
but the um, when the clay is warmed up, a worker, a person can um, squeeze squeeze the cane, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it until until you get a smaller a smaller version. Now what I did after I got the smaller version of this cane, then I added um, some other elements around the side of it. You can see the different colors. So I added those around the side. You can see that it looks like a stripe around the edge. I used a uh, extruder tool to extrude a round shape and a diamond shape. And then I made this cane, which is um, some stripes stacked onto each other and then cut the stripes and then reposition them against each other like you see. And here's a, a bigger version, longer version. So that's that. And then um, I took sections of this cane and added them on to this cane to get this. And then um, one of the heart boxes I made, I used that cane to cover this heart box. So you can see where the cane is applied all the way around. And I did that on the bottom. And on this particular box, I, you know, we talk, have been talking about how the artwork tells us what it wants. And um, sometimes a uh, piece will tell me that it wants to be sanded. <laughs> And I sometimes hate it when it does that because to get a real sh strong shine, I start sanding with a uh, 200 grit wet dry sandpaper. And I sand the piece with the 200 grit sandpaper. And then I take a 400 grit sandpaper and I sand the piece with the 400 grit sandpaper. And then I take the 600 grit and I sand the piece with the 600 grit. And then I get the 800 grit and sand the piece with the 800 grit. And then I get the 1000 grit and I sand the piece with the 1000 grit. And then I get the 1200 grit and I sand the piece with the 1200 grit. Wow. And then I get the 1500 grit and I sand the piece with the 1500 grit. And then I get the 2000 grit and I sand the piece with the 2000 grit. And then I get that's the 2500 grit. And that's a lot of sandy. That's why I say sometimes the piece says, sand me, sand me. And I say, oh no, really? Um, so then I sand it with the 2000 grit and then I get the 2500 grit and I sand it with the 2500 grit. And then if I want it really extra shiny, incredibly shiny, then I get another tool like a drill, a drill with um, this kind of buffing wheel on it. And then I buff the thing with that. Okay, so then I get it nice and shiny. Um, so that's one of the, um, so I'm going to um, slice some pieces of this, this cane 
and send those off to um, LaShawn. So he's asked for uh, about 30, 35 uh, slices. Some he's going to use as earrings and others uh, he'll apply to the canvas somehow. We'll have to slice all of these and send those off to him. Um, and here's another one, another cane. It also has an adinkra symbol in the center, in the very center is the Wawa Abba symbol. Mm. And Wawa Abba stands for strength and perseverance. And do you notice anything about the color scheme of this particular cane? It's the red, what is it? Red, black, and green? Yeah. What Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. The red, black, and green. So, um, so I'll be sending this one off to him. Now, again, you can see that um, this is an example of my KDQ cane. So you can see all of the different elements that are added to um, create one large cane. So, for example, the Wawa Abba in the center is one cane and then on this, each side is another cane. So these these canes take take me several days to complete. I would think so. It's because you're doing a lot of pressing, correct? Pressing? You know, like putting them together as you put them together. Yes, yes. Well, it, and it's also the putting them together that's putting mm -hmm. them together. Well, like, I, I mean, like when you when you're trying to make them smaller, and you said you were you were pressing oh, yes. ends, yeah. Yes, that's right. So that is the least um, time consuming. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all the other pieces that are the most time consuming. Mm -hmm. Adding them and coming, creating the patterns. Yeah, Those creating are, all the, all the different patterns. And so uh -huh. this. Um, this cane, I squeeze the ends, the mm -hmm. very ends of it, to get a point, like like this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. See how it's pointed on the on the edges. And then I took a uh, took a slice of a section and I rolled it up. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so I get that. So this is another uh, slice that I'll be forwarding off to him. Nice. Oh, I see we have Deborah in the room. Miss Deborah Shedrick is in the house. Hey, hello, how Deborah. Doing? My hair. Hey, hey Deborah. Hair. Deborah, um, come on. Good, good, good. 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 I use the camera as my uh, mirror. Hi, Hi everybody. Hello. Hey, hey Deborah. Hey, Deborah. Hey, hey Louise. Yes, hey, Louise. So, uh, how do you feel about day eight? Is this eight or nine? This is day nine, Deborah. Nine, nine day nine. Deborah's a day behind <laughs> us. Get back on. Get back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trying to catch up. The board is trying to catch. I think you're all caught up. You think so? <laughs> I've, been watch, I've been watching you work, so I think you're pretty caught up. Oh, no, I'm never caught up. I don't know. I don't know. You've got some things going on. So I'm going to let, so um, Kathleen, are you still working on things or are you just show and tell today? Um, it's mostly show and tell because I'm not going to be, um, I think I'm not going to be showing, making any canes, mm -hmm. um, at least not for a while, because we're supposed to be experimenting. Right. And we're supposed to be doing something that is out of our um, comfort zone and something that we haven't done before. Correct. But I wanted to show these um, elements that will be going off to LaShawn. Okay. Okay. So that when the when his pieces are completed. Mm -hmm. Then folks will be able to say, "Oh yeah, remember that?" Right. So they can try. Say. Oh, really nice. Okay, all right. So we have. So um, have go ahead. So I have one more or two more to show you. Okay. 
Let's get through right. the show. All right, ladies, we're gonna let her show the last, okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, I have said, uh, when I teach a class and also during this session, um, I have mentioned that working with polymer clay is like working with solid paint. So I was invited to uh, Delta Sigma Theta literary luncheon to um, share some of my artwork and realize that I didn't have anything in the colors that the Deltas have as their, um, their symbol. So and if you know what the Delta colors are, they're red and white. So I spent a month working on a selection of uh, designs for the deltas using red and white. So you've seen um, seen some of my work already. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So do you know what happens when you mix red and white? Becomes pink. You get pink. And, and those are not the delta colors. <laughs> so no, how they're you not. How to get an interesting pattern with polymer clay using red and white uh -huh. and not have it turn pink. That was my challenge. So here's what I came up with. I used my gloves, and every time I was working with the white, I used the gloves with the white. I would take them off, and when I rolled the pasta, through the pasta machine, because the pasta machine is like a potter's wheel, mm -hmm. and it's, it's an integral portion of working with polymer clay. So I um, would work with the white, clean the rollers off, change my gloves, put the red in, roll the red through with a new pair of gloves, then it'd go back to the white. I'd have to clean the rollers on the pasta machine, change gloves, put the white in, and now come up with an interesting design that's red and white that doesn't turn pink. So what I did is I made uh, a round circle with white, a big round fat circle log that was white. And I took a blade, one of these flexible blades, and I took the blade and I sliced the white so I got a curve on each side of the circle. And then I took black clay and wrapped those curves with the black. And then inserted the curves back to themselves. And, um, oh, first I put red in there and then put the curves back to themselves. So I got a circle. And then with the extruder, I extruded a triangle of white, a long log of triangle white, and a long log of triangle red. And you can see, can you see the triangles there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I wrapped the circle where I had the curves. I wrapped the, I first laid out the uh, white triangles next to each other and then wrapped black around those white and then I put the red triangles upside down on top of the black. So I got this triangle shape that I then could place around the big circle that I had already made. Mm. So I got an interesting pattern using red and white and not have it turn pink. Yeah, it's really pretty. So I did another one. I did that again um, 
in these gold tones. And here's, uh, here it is round. So, um, and then here's what I was talking about with the triangles. So I took uh, the red triangles, in this case they're gold, lined those with black, and then laid the white triangles on top of that. Mm -hmm. And you can see where it's wrapped around the circle. Uh -huh. And then I wrapped that circle with brown, in this piece with brown. Um, so this is another pattern that's unique to me that I'll be sending off to um, LaShawn. So this pattern uh, the Bessie Saka. Saka Cola Nuts, the Adinkra symbol. And um, various versions of this. Yeah, that's really pretty. Mm -hmm. And then here's, here's uh, another one. And then this this one, um, do you know the Adinkra symbol? Uh, uh, oh, my mind is lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sankofa, the Sankofa. So uh, often, this is the original Sankofa symbol. And the uh, one that is, many people probably know is the bird facing backwards. So I'll also be sending this. Uh, this is another one of what I call the KDQ cane, where you see all the different elements lined up. So like I said, these canes take days to finish. I and imagine. Yeah, if I don't have to blend the, or mix the colors myself, it it goes a little bit faster. But if I have to mix the colors myself, well, then it really takes a long time. Like I said, this this one this one took me six eight hour days, six mm -hmm. days eight hours throughout the day, six days to make this cane. Mm. That's a lot. That's really Kathleen, beautiful. Though. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, can, I, can you send me a few pieces so that I can Who incorporate that? them? That is, is that Karen. Karen. That's Karen. Oh, you know what? So Karen, um, yes. what I'll, I'm going to send LaShawn uh, baked ones, the cured ones. Mm -hmm. But for you, for you, I'll send you send them raw. Okay. All and right, thank um, you. I would love to work with those. They're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was gonna say you could send me some pots. I would love to work. <laughs> send me a pot or a jar, and I would love to work. Yeah, with them I too. see you. Yeah, because I was thinking the same thing yeah, of adding will, some to the yeah, wood pieces that I'm doing. Yes. So um, the clay fire, this polymer fires at 275 degrees. A friend of mine fires hers at 295 to 300. But okay. Um, okay. The, the label says 275 degrees. So if you're going to apply them okay. to, um, if you're going to apply them to like a wood surface mm -hmm. or, uh, or a ceramic piece, then I'll send you the raw mm -hmm. clay, and then you can um, okay. apply them. The uh, ceramic clay can fit into the oven and cure it at 275 degrees. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. OK, thank you. So yeah, then you I can, would love to play you, with that. Mm -hmm. You can okay. place them and cure them however you want. And probably the same is true with the wood piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wood pieces, so, so you can, um, I might, Assumption is that you could place 
the you could do one of two things. You could place the raw clay onto the wood piece, mm -hmm. or you can shape the raw clay onto the wood piece. No, I, I was gonna say you could shape the raw clay onto the wood piece and then cure it on the wood. Well, I'm probably gonna put it on um, because uh, the wood will have, I'm gonna have some resin on there. So I probably won't put the wood. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's gonna have resin on it. So I'm sure I'm probably going to cure it first and then first. put it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you want to make sure that it's going to be shaped to fit because after you right. take it out of the oven, it won't it won't bend and form to the shape. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to add it into the design um, as I'm creating the design. I'm going to use it as part of the design. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so if it's a square flat piece, then you won't have much problem. But I'm, I'm thinking that the piece, the wood piece might be curved. And if it is. Yeah. If it then is, then, then, I'll, then I'll do that before I put the resin on it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And you can probably, and many are, uh, polymer artists use resin instead of doing the sanding like I do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They, will cover, they will cover their piece with resin so it gets shiny without all the sanding. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I like the I like the fact that you do the sanding. I mean, not that I want yeah. to do all of that sanding, but I like that. Yeah, I I like the sanding better. I think I I just feel like it will um, stay shiny longer. I for some reason think the the resin will wear off or crack or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe it won't actually, but that's my my uh, sense about it, which is why I prefer to do the sandy. So uh, we'll have to, you'll have to let me know which, um, which clay pieces or what colors you would like to have. Right. Okay. I probably have, I probably have something already in those color tones. I have lots of them. Right. I'm going to, I mean, send me what I, I really like those long ones that you had. Those are really, really pretty. But yeah, I really like the, uh, I like those. Those are real pretty. I really, yeah, I like that one a lot. Yeah, so this one is um, blues and um, ivory and kind of a turquoise. Yeah, I think that would make, that would make a nice piece. Okay, so I can um, see, how should I do this? I'm just trying to think if, if I should send you a, a chunk and then you can slice it off yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. That'll work. And you want to get a blade like this, a cutting blade. Let me see. Let me see what you have. Okay, so it slices. Okay, I like that. All right. And I can, just pick that up the, I can just get that at the art store, correct? Yeah, you can get this at an uh, art supply store. Okay. Um, it's, and I, here I find them at Michael's. They're in the aisle with the polymer clay. Okay. All right. Then I'll just pick one of those up. Yes. And so they come in different thicknesses. So some are stiffer than others. Mm -hmm. And probably for your purposes, you want the stiffer blade rather than the thinner blade. Okay. The, the stiffer blade will, will help keep its strength as you slice the root. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so you might have to um, warm and condition the clay when it arrives. I'll try and do some of that before it leaves. Okay. Um, but as it travels, it might get hard again. So you'll have to squeeze it. Do you, have you ever worked with polymer clay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've worked with polymer clay years ago. Um, I worked with it, especially when it first came out. Because I used to work at an I, I worked at an art store and taught for a while. And I used to use, uh, teach about polymer clay. Yeah, so this is different than the Sculpey Three, which is really right. soft and mushy. This these canes I use um, Fimo. Right. Yeah, I've used Fimo as I've used Fimo as well. Okay, so you know the female professional is, is stiff. Right. Yeah, so these are made with this uh, female professional, so they, they will be stiff. You'll have to 
condition them once they arrive in order to cut them so they're sliced better, best. Okay. Okay, so I'll send you a chunk of this. Um, so this is all I have of this cane. So um, we'll, how much, uh, like you a know, half an inch will that? Whatever, you know what, whatever you send me, that's what I'm going to use, Kathleen, because I don't want to use okay. up all of it. I don't want to, you know, just send me uh, what you're comfortable with sending me, and that's what I'll use. All right. Okay, okay, real good. So this one will come to you. Okay. And, um, and Karen, are you still there, out there? Yeah, I see. So do you have um, color preferences, Karen? No, you send what your heart's desire. Okay. All right, we'll do. So I'm Thank just going to be moving people around the board, and you guys just keep on creating. Yeah. So I will just be um, would just be making these cuts for Lashawn. Okay. All right. Sounds good. We'll just keep watching you. <laughs> okay, I just have to get this um, camera so that it will. How's that? Can you see? Let me. Okay, let me put you up so I can see. All right. Yeah, if you could move it just. So, yeah. All right. Let's see. Get you positioned right. Right there. Can you see right there. That would be. Uh, yeah, I don't know how how is that. Well, I can't see the clay, but got a nice view of the silver thing. That's <laughs> the silver thing. Yeah, right there. Yeah, where your finger is. So if you put the clay right, right there, right there. Put the clay right where you had your finger. Come over a little bit more to your left. I think I'm on your left or either two. No, come back. I guess it's your right. Maybe it was your, okay. <laughs> it's where you had your finger at first. Right here is where I had my finger. All right, come, come down a little bit. <laughs> We're trying to get her lined up, Poncho. I hear you. You you go right in here. It sounds like you're making great progress. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to sing so we can have some music. I got all these artists up here. You got some music for us, Poncho, so we can do the. Sure. All right, um, and we're gonna get Kathleen hooked up so we can see what she's doing. Kathleen, remember you had it sideways before. You can't just sit it up against something and look at it forward. It's supposed to overhead. Um, let's see. I don't won't know what happened to you. Oh, you okay, right I see you. Uh, Karen, okay. are you over there, girl? Yeah. <laughs> Gary. I see you over there blowing your hands every now and then. Yeah. Where's your tiny little space heater? Uh, the space heater is um it pulls too much power. And so it will um knock my circuits off. Oh, okay. Well, Karen, you are a diehard, I'm just gonna tell you. Yep. Oh, we got Ryan. Okay, we got a house low, people. We got art everywhere. Whose music is that? That's Poncho. Oh, okay. No, this is the music that uh, Louise oh, Cutler. Is, uh, okay, let me put her name up. This is. Uh, Fanta, Fanta, Fanta. Right. Okay, let's get her name up. Oh, 
All righty, Poncho. I just came in to see what folks are doing. <laughs> you over here pushing, you over here pushing my buttons. Where is your working window at, uh, Louise Cutler? <laughs> oh, I put it up. Look, wait, I put it oh, up. Oh, you got the floating head. <laughs> there you go. I, I put it up every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I put the head up so everybody will know that's where I, I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I like that piece that Deborah's working on. I do too. I know. I wanted to say a little bit about it. I'm gonna bring it. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can unmute her. Deborah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that piece you're working on. Okay. This is the my first collaboration. This is a piece of paper that Poncho sent that mm. actually um, is a piece of paper that was painted by his father. Oh. Okay. So. Yeah, so you you got you, that pretty I know, quick, I have too much time. huh? You got that in the mail pretty What'd quick. You, you got that in the I mail got it pretty today. quick. Wow. Yeah, I was like, wow, this came really fast. But yeah, so I'm gonna finish her, and I'm gonna send it to you so you can do your part. Sounds and fabulous. Then, um, you, if you think you need to send it back to me, do that. Well, if that's the case, you sign it just in case it's done. Just sign it. I'm not going to get it done until you put your part on it. Well, my thing is if you think you're finished, sign I'll it. Sign it back. That way I won't have to send it back. Right. Looking good. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, I decided, let me work on this piece. I got some of Mr. Brown's energy up in the house. <laughs> yeah. Some of the I'm talking about Mr. Energy. Brown here. Well, um, it looks really pretty. I really like the colors. I like, I like what you've done. Thank you. When I saw that teal, I said, okay, I can work with this. The teal and the mauve. All right, let's check in on Ryan. All right, Ryan, what are you up to today? Oh. Hold on, Ryan. Okay, go ahead. What, what are you up to? Yeah, um, I'm finally working on this big background that I've had um, posted up all week. Um, but also earlier, um, I found a really cool thing while I was out thrifting. I found this, um, it's like a hanging scroll that's not really a scroll, it's like a nice. wood. And so I primed it today um, and I'm gonna do something really cool over it um, after decide what. That's wow. really nice. Yeah. Um, that's a really nice piece, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. If you get frustrated with it and you just can't seem to make it go, you can mail it to me. <laughs> <laughs> True. Pancha wants to work on everything. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I want to paint that glass head you got up there. You want to take my glass head? No, I, I, paint I, that. I reverse paint that from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, I think Karen wanted the glass head too. <laughs> I forgot where I saw those glass heads. They were either. I got one. I got a bunch of them from. Um, once from Pier One, and I got another set from, was it Marshalls? Oh, okay. I can't remember where I got that glass head from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, Karen, what you up to over there? I can't unmute you. You must have muted yourself or something. Oh, there you go. Nothing. 
I'm watching. <laughs> no, um, no, I actually just finished doing some wax resist for these faces, um, the glaze for tomorrow. So um, they're signed, they've been wax resist. And so now I'm trying to make a decision on the colors that they're gonna be. And I have a sheet of paper that I have to um, refer to because I have some cups that are already glazed, but they don't have their teacups. So that is it right now for me. And so I saw um, those Karen, teapots. You know, I was digging them, Karen. Yeah, uh, they're fun. They're fun. And so these are their handles. So this is uh, very intimidating right here. To me. <laughs> also, um, you do the you do like the wood um, the what you call it handles. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very intimidating. Um, so I need to, um, I have some dye, um, so I'm going to dot a lot of the handles, but I'm trying to figure out what color I want uh, to make this natural as possible, but yeah, cool. So that's what I'm th thinking about right now. Yeah, so I'm just like, hey, I'm in the studio, this is a hula hoop. When you say handles, what are they? I mean, handles to what? Handles the to the teapot. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, she mm -hmm. does the, uh, it's almost, it's not a bamboo. What is it called, Karen? Bamboo. Oh, okay. <laughs> All um, right, it's a bamboo. <laughs> yeah, so this is the, the bottom. You could have at least said it was a boo-bam. <laughs> um, boo-bam. <laughs> Oh, y'all like tea, Miss Rosemary? Okay. Hey, big tears over there. Rosemary's been burning up this feed. <laughs> yes, well, she Rosemary, has. They got teacups to go with them, too. They do. That was the first message I've ever actually seen. All right. Oh, Rosemary's been burning up the feed today. <laughs> All right. We, let's see if we can get Michelle to give us an update on what she's doing. Let's get Michelle in. All right, Michelle, are you there? I am. I am indeed. Uh, <laughs> I'm I figured out how to hear you on my phone. I'm actually going to, it's going to be the earth, but I haven't decided if I'm going to put the shadow on the earth or just have the whole thing. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm loving the moon until it turns into the earth. <laughs> yeah, um, I just haven't decided how I'm going to approach it. I I felt oh, a little like, Give me one second, because Catholic, and she said, you saying bye? All right. Bye-bye, hon. It was Bye. great. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, that's the wrong person. There we go. All right, Michelle, go for it. So I got a bunch of paintings in the ugly stage, and today has not gone exactly like as planned or by any stretch. So I was like really anxious. I'm glad that like there's other people. Because <laughs> um, like when I say ugly stage, you know, my paintings go through the stage where like this will be numerous coats and that doesn't look like anything and i no, no, no. see that's your opinion of your work because I right because i see the i see the rabbit down there i think it's neat i think it's really <laughs> nice i think and what also michelle people need to see the stages you call it ugly stages but you should take the ugly <laughs> off and just call it a stage right. a stage yeah and then uh my squirrel who like it's coming out pretty good but it doesn't look uh, like it doesn't look the way that I expected. Uh, and it looks like a squirrel. That means. Yeah. That, that that's mean, what my husband said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking, looking good. At least it looks like you got some momentum finally. Mm. Yeah. And then I was working on this one. I I added the yellow. I didn't love the yellow. I like the yellow here, but I don't love it in the rest. So I'm actually going to take some orange and I'm going to orange out. But I didn't want to work on the same piece every single night. <laughs> Very um, good. But I am happy with like once I get the rest of the color that this piece will be done. I'm I'm pretty happy with everything except for like just noodling around the what the final colors will be. Looking good, looking good. Oh, our girl, what you call it? She did a shout out to Deborah Shedrick. Let me see if you can see it. Hold on. I'm gonna put it up here. She did a shout out to Deborah on Instagram. Very cool. This was our girl from uh, uh, this was uh, from uh, the Beauty of Blackness that hung out with us. Okay. In our after party, she shouted her out. Said she did a, a demo, a demo for. Her. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
Very cool. Nice. Love that. People are shouting us out. Oh, wait. I don't want me. <laughs> Keep going there, Michelle. Uh, I guess we're I guess we're doing music now.
Pokemon. I've arrived. Yo! Keep your hands up. Keep the energy. Keep your spirit. I'm just a keep on moving. I'm just a keep on going. Keep on fighting. I'm Mr. Keep on praying. Pray for me, pray for me. If you can't, don't hit on me, hit on me. Stay the hell away from me, away from me. I don't need this energy around me. All I need is good vibes. You bring bad vibes. I just want to feel. But you wanna be real, be real, be real But I know your negativity never could stop my shine Yes, I can assure you no matter what I would just be fine Go to jobless, no man cares Don't be stressed, do your best I miss a key for moving Mr. Keep on going. I'm Mr. Keep on fighting. I'm Mr. Keep on praying. Keep your heads up. Keep the energy. Keep your spirit. Papa, Baron Sam, we fail you to turn your party when my lovely bitch. Boko has my six and my key by your test and my new eyes. The bagan with Papa, you jump for your cafe. He did not demanche. So I get monkey, I can see. But I know your negativity never could stop my shine. Yes, I can assure you, no matter what, I will just be fine. Go to Japan, no man comes. Don't be stressed, do your best. I miss the keep on moving. I miss the keep on going. Keep your hands up. Keep your energy. Keep your spirit.
LaShawn, you have a question. LaShawn, can you hear me? You have a question. I don't know. I don't think LaShawn can hear me. I can hear you. Oh. <laughs> I keep. You can't hear me? I yeah. hear you now. We can hear you. You don't have to yell. <laughs> okay. All right. I thought Louise is going deaf for me or something. I just did my old man's voice. Now you have a question that says, what adhesive are you using? Spit. No, I'm using <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a gel, a gel medium. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm gonna show you for those that want to know. Gel medium. You can get this at uh, it's a gloss gel, and uh, the brand name is Masters Touch. Masters Touch. You get this at Hobby Lobby and use that forty percent off coupon. And you'd be paying about what about eighteen dollars or so for it. Mm -hmm. Are you putting fabric on that? Yes, this is burlap. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm texturizing it with some burlap. You know, I uh, I think the first person I saw to do to do this in a uh, a massive way was Poncho. Mm. So uh, you know, we we get inspired by other artists and things that they do, and we put our own spin to it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though he's actually, I think he's actually done burlap on uh, some some vases before. Oh, okay. Yes, I have experimented with burlap. I've done a lot of painting on burlap. It's a great uh, texture medium. Yes. A great what medium? Hey, it's a it's a great texture medium. Mm. And unlike LaShawn, I usually uh, use flat or matte. Well, you know, Sean likes some good gloss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you look at his work, the brother is in the gloss business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But by the time by the time I finish with this, it won't really make a difference because it's all just undercolor. Yeah. I mean, this is just, just texture for it. You know, but by the time I finish slapping the paint on this, it'd be a whole nother creature. Where'd you get that box from, man? I got the, I got the, um, these are wooden vases and I get them from Walmart. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You just told me I have to go get me some. Yeah, I picked these up today. And you know what? You can order them off their website as well. And so you don't have to run around town looking for them necessarily. You can order them right off their website. And what are they called? Uh, I'll take a um, I'll take a snapshot of that and send you the um, our, the item number. So you put that in. It's, it's called the twenty inch uh, tall natural wood vase. There you go. And it is currently out of stock. <laughs> well, John bought all of them. John bought the last one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And that that's just online. I'm sure you find if you look up at stores, you may find them at some of the stores. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so you got the code on it. Just you can call one of your local stores and ask them to do that. If you have that in stock. Mm -hmm. And that's the color they are, the brown? Yes. Yeah. So this has a little texture all around it, a little burlap. I'll come back and I'm going to throw some other stuff on them. But first, I'm going to put the burlap down on all of them. I purchased three. Because three is the magic number. Is three the magic number? Three is the magic number. All right. I like the way that sounds. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Now you told me to do six masks. I guess that's three and three, huh? Exactly. 
<laughs> well, you do three for your your natural ego and do uh, three for your alternate ego. There oh, you go. Rosemary says she'll take 24 of those. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary's like, 24, please. Uh, we, need we need to check in with, uh, with Michelle. Michelle is rolling down there. Oh, where is she? Where, oh, there she is. I love that, Michelle. Look at that. You're on mic, uh, Michelle. Talk to me. It looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. so he's Thank you. The, he must be on the moon because he's howling at the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's going to be a red fox when I get done with it, but I was just trying to make sure that it'll blend with the rest by adding as many colors. Like when I have extra color, I add it into the shadows. Uh, Michelle, I think you win the award for the least amount of paint used by any artist in the group. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm used to being. Um, do do uh, me a favor, uh, Michelle. Show them your palette. Show everybody your palette that you use. And, and look at that amount of paint she's using. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. She is definitely on the skimpy end, but she's making it work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's nice to see the difference. You're going to make me start using less paint. I'm probably your polar opposite. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen, Poncho. Just forget it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I think it's a oh, good Karen's thing. Karen's back in. Karen's back in. Karen. Karen's like, put me in, coach. Yeah. Put me in. <laughs> I know. I was like, y'all left me. I was like, can I come back? She was like, put me in, coach. Put me in. All right. <laughs> All right. Put me in. Put me in. Carrie's like, put me in, coach. I can do it. Yep. I want I I can run that run. I'll make that touchdown. I'll score that goal. Uh, I like uh -huh. to hear Louise use uh, sports references. <laughs> I know. I don't understand them. You know I want to have those references. I'm like, huh? I got all bored. <laughs>
Uh-huh. I've been watching it. going pretty quickly this time. As you can see, this is one of the that's the first layer of what I cut out. Yeah, hopefully it's going to go right on top of that. And that's a vinyl? This is a uh, cardstock. take a break for now but thank you so much thank you michelle it was nice jamming we'll see you tomorrow yep have a great night
And then I take a break in the studio. I come outside to get a little breather. This is uh, the parking deck 
right on the same level as my building. Gives me a nice view of the city. This is a huge complex that my studio is in. So it's a pretty big little monster. This is the White Comico building. And yes, I call this the Caucasian bus. That's my truck. So, you know, every now and then I come out. Sometimes I walk out here. Sometimes I just come and get some cold air in my lungs. As you can see, it's a pretty nice view up here. Our building is called the White Comico building, so it's painted on the side of the building. And I'm right in the residential neighborhood. There is the stadium off in the distance. So normally when game day, these streets can get very, very crowded with tailgaters. But it's a nice view this time of the day. It's about the getting towards the evening, so the sun is getting ready to set. And uh you know, I just like to be reflective as I can be. You know, these times are beautiful. Sometimes I need to get away from the studio, especially when I'm quarantining. And uh, just take some time and take a little breath. Get out from the space, because you know, being in that space like that straight through can be a bit much. But as you can see, I'm in a pretty nice building here. Blessed to be in this space. Been here for, I guess, for 13, 13 or 15 years. I can't remember. So this is my parking deck. Sometimes I barbecue out here. It really depends on my mood. Um, if I was a smoker, I'd be out here too. <laughs> but I just kind of use it as my regroup space. Come out here and catch an occasional sunset. And if I stay late, Sometimes I actually catch a sunrise. But today you see what's happening. I'm just uh, cruising through and enjoying the sunset.
That's right. <laughs> Poncho must be back there eating food. He didn't put his avatar up. <laughs> All right, there we go. He's getting the he's dancing too. <laughs> All right, now where's your dance, girl? Let's sing it. You got to dance? Let me see your moves, Gabby. I'm dizzy. Oh, wait, wait. Let me do mine. Yeah, you look so enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's way more fun switching in between all of you guys. <laughs> I think... Right. Um, oh, well, I am going to bid you guys adieu. Good night. Good night, Karen. Bye, we'll see Karen. you tomorrow. You know that, though. Bye, bye y'all. Bye right now. Bye now. Bye, Karen. Look, what happened? Deborah, look, Deborah, you look like Deborah is done. Yeah, so she's good. Like she, we'll see you tomorrow, Deborah. Looks like we're moving into the night shift. I think so. Did night shift show up? Maybe Lashana hang in there. Deborah, say something. Did you? What were you saying, Deborah? I forgot. <laughs> Your mic was off. Your mic was off. We missed it. We missed it. So I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you all. Same time tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Okay, all right. All right, Deborah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Your mic's off, LaShawn. We got you. I don't know how to work in sync here. Okay, well, Sean, I'm gonna hold down the night with a plate. I mean, a charger. Yeah, back to the charger. Well, Sean's got me wanting to do the the the, the little uh, base thing, though. I might have to run to uh, Walmart and see if they have any. Yeah, definitely. Check on my, I have to go check on my little head thing. See how it's doing.
coming together or not yet, but I'm beginning to see a small flow in Trying to keep my strokes and look as consistent as I can. At this point, that becomes the biggest challenge because you get a certain amount of fatigue that takes place. Well, what I find is the variations in your lines, if you do them consistently and they look related, it's going to still kind of go together. So at this point, I got a lot of puddles of ink that I got to be real careful with. There's a point in this where I would normally take a break so that I don't fatigue myself. So I think that's what I'm going to do in a minute. So just take a small break. And we're good. But you know, sometimes it's hard to start. Edges of paper is always tricky. That's usually where a lot of mistakes can happen. 
trying to compensate right on the edge of the paper like I'm doing now. And I know I shouldn't be, but I'm uh, feeling brave today. doing this and turning it upside down is that sometimes the mistakes that you made are glamour. So I do like to make that a normal practice of doing pieces like this is to continue rotating around the seat where I made some visual mistakes. This is not a perfect process. things can go. Like I've seen all these eye shapes now. Now you know I'm doing this on a curled piece of paper so I gotta be real careful to not let gravity let my lines lose control of my lines. eyes and ancestral quality to these pieces. As you can see, it's starting to fill in. Which way do you go? Where do you stop? That becomes the question. That shadow pattern in them will come in here and do the same thing. Unmove that eye. Bring out another nose. Thank you. 
be in a slightly bigger brush. If you touch up some of these black areas. Not too much brush, because that comes in a problem too. If by chance I had to, I to really mix up my inks, some of this would not have been as hard to fill in. But, uh, you know, we make the most of what we get. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a negative space area. Because I can. Making negative areas can be fun. I usually save that for the very end. It's a balanced thing. You can put so much black in there that you lose the detail of your other stuff. So now that I'm at a pretty good point, and things are looking kind of balanced, I can go back in and carve out some more of those negative spaces. So this is what I'm doing today, this is what's on my plate, I'm trying to come up with some images that, you know, stimulate the brain, that are a little bit creative, that are not along the lines of how I know I'm going to paint, even though I'm done quite a few in this style. See, there you go. Got my first ink splash. So the important thing to do in this situation is not uh, pen. And figure out what you're going to do with it. I'm either going to make it another circular shape. Um, do I need to make that into an eye shape? I don't think I do. This is the kind of stuff that happens when you are being spontaneous. Do I want to make an eye out of that? I don't know. I'm going to come back around to that and see what I want to do with that. How long is end is important. 
too, like, you know, like a rough ending. So sometimes I'll smooth the line endings out. I'm going to let that dry because I think that's going to present another design opportunity for me if I don't go rushing into that to fix it. Yeah, I see it. Holding for a face. I take off that eye. Come through this other eye. The nose right there. Now, of course, my lip, my now that I did that, my lips be right on the edge. So I gotta make sure that I leave enough room for that. kind of nicely. So right now I'm seeing some things like I keep wanting to see an eye shape in here. Splash. Which can easily become a pupil. I don't know, I might have to do a, a, a tiling contest for folks who's watching. Title for this piece. Uh, titling is probably the hardest thing that I have to do because when you create it thousands upon thousands of pieces, you can't repeat titles. So I might get you guys to help me out with that. So yeah, I'm getting to a point where I think I'm going to take a break and revisit it. Everything dry up so that I don't smudge any paint. Build up my black areas and see if I can get them a little bit darker and then uh, check in with you guys later. As we move into week two, I'm hoping that we'll be able to start showing you guys more of the art that artists have created. I know this first week was mostly prep and you guys learned a lot of techniques and, and saw each artist get into their process. But week two should be uh, a chance for you to get a chance to see some of the creations. I try to jump ahead of the game and, and, and create some images so you guys can see what that process looks like. Uh, but the artists now are beginning to turn in some of their pieces. So this next week should be a really wonderful week. Pretty soon we'll have, um, you know, we've been doing these small videos of each artist and the, and the pieces that they produce. And so we'll see more of that being presented next week. It's coming to the second week. Week two, y'all. Hopefully you guys are taking it in, enjoying the ride, um, meeting the personalities. We have quite a few great personalities in this group. Uh, I got my favorites. I'm sure you got your favorites too. Uh, but I also our goal for week two is to make sure we can give better technology to the people who are having um, challenges. And so um, that's the goal. You know, each week we have to come up with something else 
um, dealing with this copyrighted music issue is a big issue because if an artist uses, say, copyrighted piece in their piece, all of a sudden we can have the shows being dropped by Facebook or by YouTube. So far, YouTube has been much more lenient with us than Facebook. Facebook has shut us down three days because of different uh, music that was used. So you may find us using less music until we can resolve the copyright music issue. We have also done a major call for all my music folk out there that might have stuff they want to have on there and get some, some advertising in it. So you got some stuff, send it over. Maybe we can incorporate it in the show, get you some play and help us out too with the whole copyright thing. How's that sound? So if you got some stuff, just hit me up on the Creative Quarantine page and we'll see what we can work out. Other than that, I am feeling great. This is day nine, the completion of day nine. And we'll, I'm, I'm just getting geared up for my momentum for this week. So how you holding up, Louise? Oh, wonderful. How about you? Doing good. Is LaShawn still hanging in there? LaShawn has taken a uh, retirement for the evening. It is just the two of us. <laughs> Sheldon hasn't shown up yet. Sheldon tried to get in when we had 10 spaces filled up in the queue. Oh. So I, I dropped a few. I think you had five of them at one point. Who had five of them? You had at least four. <laughs> Well, you know, you have to drop me somewhere. Well, it's all good. Well, I, I, I did. To, huh? I sent him another invitation. So if he wanted to come back in, he had an opening. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did have quite a few people in the queue this today, huh? Yes, we did. It was wonderful having everybody hanging out and doing their thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think they really, really wanted to leave us. I enjoyed that video you had. Well, thanks, dear. Trying to get a little bit of work done, huh? Well, you know, there you go. This is how we, you and I have to work it. So I guess our little music plan worked. It did. It really did. So I'm kind of happy about that. And I Me like too. That I'll, you I'll, I'll grab a couple more songs and add to it. I'm glad you invited some other. I, I like the end part where you were like, hey, we can give you some play. I like that. So. So I'm going to leave your mic live for a while, so no cursing. <laughs> I think I might 
white. Yeah, isn't that white? A little left in there. So what's your plan for tomorrow? Pretty much like we've been doing today, babe. Keeping that content coming. Okay. This was a good day. I like the way this day flowed. It was a very smooth day. Huh? Got a nice feel to it. I did. I like the way this one flowed. I like the way this day flowed. Yeah, I like that we got people on earlier and um, tons of, you know, several of them were in the queue all at the same time. Band. Is that Sheldon? No, that's, I think that might be Rosemary. Who? Rosemary might be on. Oh. She's been sitting tech for all night. Put a couple of flyers out today. Hmm? Put a couple of flyers out today. Oh, did you? Yeah, just cut stuff. Well, I got your bag. Most your box mostly packed. Good. I just have to put. I'm I'm doing that one long drawing. Oh, did you see? I put one of the what you call it on there. These. Hold on, I'll show you. I did these kind of last today. Hey, Rosemary. Oh, I got to stop it. I ain't put nothing in the oven to bake but a sweet potato. All this pottery <laughs> and dinka and danka. I'm like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Woo. Hi, Tiffany. That's Tiffany. She's one of the community activists. She had a huge uh, black and brown Wall Street at one of the malls brought it back to life because it's a dead mall so she's on say hi to tiffany hey I'm tiffany i saw tiffany tuning in thank you for tuning in tiffany hey tiffany and um i sheldon i stopped by dropped off his stuff he's his mother knows the vendor with the ipads mm -hmm. so he was supposed to go over there and uh mm -hmm. check that out uh, Frankie should be in. He Frankie was in earlier. He said, he, oh, okay. He said he was coming back in oh, 10 got, minutes. Most of the artists got on early today. Okay. All we right. Only had, only had a call here for Frankie. Matter of fact, Frankie just tuned in. He must have heard you talking. Yeah. And uh, was Sheldon in earlier? Hi. Yeah, bring Sheldon. that handsome young man to the forefront, Louise. 
Uh, my name is Tracy. Hi. How you doing? Okay. How's things going? He's handsome. I'm loving my little light. Huh? I'm loving this light. Well, That's good. I'm glad you got it. it. I just have to hook it up to the phone so I can get it going, but I'm into this project here. You can see. So listen, Frankie, I have some easels. You have to check me out tomorrow and we can get Jason to look at your equipment and see if you on target. I sure will. Okay. What time, what time you want me to go by there? I'll, I'll call you once I get here because we're going to be doing some uh, streaming so that this can be seen on the on the TV at the gallery. When people are walking by, we're trying to hook that up. Okay. Beautiful. So that all the segments can be going, you know, over and over uh, okay. every day from beginning to now. Well, let me know if I need, I've got, remember, I got recordings of every day. So okay, if I can try to get you a, I can get you probably a six hour recording, but you got to uh, let me know what kind of equipment you need to do to do that. Okay. When he comes in tomorrow, we'll call you. Okay. He yeah. also does the 3D um, stuff. So I'm going to meet him tomorrow and I'll put you two together. So you, cause, so you can tell him. Because he asked me, did we have files? I told him, I don't know. The only file I know is a file cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> I go, you know, I hate it when you tell people, I don't know. And then they ask you, I said, boy, didn't I just tell you I don't know nothing about no files? <laughs> I, uh, uh, or turning something on, I can hardly turn the oven on. Now, now remember, we are still live. Oh, okay. You got to be careful what you say and how. All right. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let the artists work for a little bit longer and see where we go. All right. Okay. All right, Rosemary. You have a good night. Yeah, you too. Hi, Louise. See, where's Miss Deborah? They were all on earlier, darling. You're the one tuning in late. Oh, okay. Everybody yeah. was on today. I mean, I saw her earlier, but I wanted to give her a shout out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she worked for maybe about an hour or so. Yeah, I saw her. With that piece that your daddy has started? Yes. Absolutely. But I got to give my sisters a shout out. I got to call Michelle, too. Yeah, Michelle was on early. She did a good job as well. All right. All right, dear. We will hey, see you tomorrow. Doing? And there is Mr. Smith trying to chime in. Hey there. I'm off. All right. Take care now. Love you. Peace now. <laughs> All right.
Hey, Brother Sheldon, try to put, point your camera down a little teeny bit more so we can see what you're working on on the table. Right now, we got a nice picture of your light. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, I'm excited about my light, too. So. Yeah, I know. I see. I can hear you smiling. <laughs> I'm like, man, I've been trying to get one for so long. Yeah, man, with the, with the, the U.S. mail got us this time. Yes. I think uh, Frankie Frankie's pretty excited about his life, too. Yeah, I, I, did, I did a whole video, but, and, and that was the first time, so I'm not like, I don't usually do that type of stuff, but I was, I wanted to, I wanted everybody to see, like, the opening, and it was, it was cool. Everything I needed. It's nice though because the, the way it makes your heart pop. Well, we all could use a little more light, so uh, I'm gonna turn yeah. the mics back off, and you guys could just work as long as you want to. Sounds great. I'm working with y'all. <laughs>
Sheldon, can you move your picture more into the screen? There we go. Okay, that's good. Can you scoot up just a little bit more with it? Okay, there, because it's right there. You go. Now I can see you working.
Frankie, were you saying something? Hold on. Okay. Go ahead. I was trying to. I love that feature with the music in the background. Mm -hmm. I like, um, I'm going to cut off now. My son just got up. All right, Frankie. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. This was nice. Nice little session. I got a lot of stuff to do. Things done. I was finger punching. So thank you. All right, so we'll see you tomorrow, Frankie. All right, good night, y'all. Good night. Look like it's getting down to us, darling. It looks like it. I think uh, My man Sheldon is still hanging in the house. Sheldon's still hanging in there. Sheldon's still in there, so. Still got man Sheldon. How are you doing over there, Sheldon? I'm going to be here for a while. So if y'all want to, you know, go get your dinner and all that stuff. I know you started early today. That's fine. Okay. We're going to let Sheldon paint some. All right, too. Sheldon. I'll be here. Okay. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Karen Wildbuster. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And I did a quarantine, uh, I think it was 2006, with myself and five other artists um, with Poncho. Um, it was the very first quarantine that I have ever done. And I must say that um, I was forced to create. And I, I don't mean forced in terms of somebody making me, but myself making myself. I mean, it was cool. It was cool sitting in, in, in a room with um, five other artists, knowing that you had five other artists there, knowing that the juice of um, creative, creativity was kind of like flowing all over the place. You know, the, the vibe was good. The music was good. The conversation was good. It was great getting up and just walking around and seeing what other artists and how they were creating. And it became like a spiritual journey because we we not only spoke on art, we just spoke on um, life. We spoke on the, the struggle uh, of, of an artist at times and how uh, like minds come together to, to make this thing work. So the quarantine, it is definitely a great thing. Um, I've been watching. I've been watching this one in 2000. Now 21, uh, really, really uh, intensely. I mean, I like the idea of uh, how it's going now. You know, how it's going now to be able to uh, see you guys virtually in each other's studios and seeing how you create. It's the this. It's a different kind of feeling. A different kind of flow. Sorry, Karen. Oh, man. I might just remember what I said. All right. I'll take some of that and some of this. <laughs> you can try to pick up where you left off, and I'll just pick, it, pick up okay. where you left. Go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah, so, you know, that's a, that's a different kind of flow watching you guys. And uh, me sitting on the other side now, um, as so many other people are just kind of like tuned into, uh, into the live feed and seeing you create. Um Artists that I know, you know, uh, Karen Clark, you know, I've known her for a minute. We went to Africa together on that, the, my first trip to Africa. But to sit there and watch her throw and and and, and see it all come up in the, into fruition, just like right there, it's like, well, well, I knew you did it. 
But seeing is a different thing. The Sean, it was the same thing. I'm um, actually watching work, learning about Mr. Mr. Mary, um, you know, and how you do what you do, um, the way that you do it um, was, was good as well. So I say great job to all of you guys. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of everybody's work. Um, I'm going to, going to ride this process with you, uh, for the next, uh, next few weeks and uh, keep staying free. something to color in this case it's just black in this case it's just blue. So, um, this is something to color in this case it's just black in this case it's just blue after you base coat it you mix a wash of white paint and uh, you put that on top and then you drop alcohol into it to create a resist so i'm going to do that for you now so you can see what's happening very easy to do but you can get so many different nuances based on how you thin your paint um i'm going to use titanium white for this be a little easy for you to see on camera when i do this technique i like to use like a fan brush i actually have an old fan brush it's actually pretty good that's what it looks like uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this water 50-50 kind of ish but that's where you get your difference of your patterns based on how thin you make this paint so I like to do around 50-50 I have done less the thicker you make the paint the harder you get the smaller the dots will be the thinner you make the paint the larger the cells will be I mix that up real good with my fan brush because the fan brush allows me to flat it out a lot. So we don't want to fix that, but we don't want to go with it there we go.
sometimes it's about feeling the thing too. And the more you practice with this, as you can see the from my show yesterday, my dad made several hundreds of sheets of paper. Then you start to develop what works that doesn't work for you. Okay, so that's good. We'll mix. Now you gotta get your alcohol ready. I use cheap alcohol from CVS. I use that brand. Sometimes I'll take this and put it in a nice little squeeze bottle like this. You know, this is full alcohol. I have the mark alcohol. And then uh, I'm going to show you on a piece of board how it works. Now, here are two sheets of paper that I've coated out. These are my samples. Those out the way. I've got two pieces of board here one brown, one uh, black. I think for camera's sake, we do the black first. All right? So, basically, what I'm going to do in this stage, sometimes I'll take water and just wet it. And move that around. I put a little water. Since I got my gloves on, I'd be a little messy. I'll just smooth that on the board. All right. I do the same thing for this one since it's drying. Paper is acidic. So you see what happens when you wet it? You see it resists the water a little bit. I like to wet this paper so you get the subtraction. I don't know what is going on. kind of paper on your feet peeling off. So that might be a water based paint. That could create another situation that's why I like experimenting. So I'm going to leave that. Well, I'm going to do that while it's still here. So here's the brown one. What we're going to do is, I'm going to take the white, pour some on there. You see that brown is already making something wonderful happen. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to keep this top layer as wet as I can keep it. That white is a really good consistency. The whole goal when you do this technique is to make sure that nothing gets dry until you're ready for it to get dry. So I flood the sheet first, make sure there are no dry points and before I grab my alcohol. Now, sometimes I'll take my bottle, this is my squeeze bottle, and while that's starting to set, I drop alcohol. Now see how what happened to it? It created all those small little cells. That's what happens with a bottle. And what I do sometimes too is I'll go back in and drop larger cells on by using the, uh, the stem inside of my alcohol. As you can see, this paint was a little thicker, so it's uh, making really nice small cells. The thicker the paint, it allows you to do smaller cells. In this case, as you can see, that white turned to like that milky looking brown. So now imagine whatever you got on your base color determines what your outcome is going to be. You will never ever be able to make two sheets of this twice unless you have them laid out together and they'll be similar, but they'll never be the same. Very organic process. So once I drop a couple on there, I leave it.
Well, 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 y'all. As you can see, we had a full house today. And everybody was in the studio working. This was pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic day, a very creative day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to get ready to close things out, y'all. We're getting close to the six hour point. Yeah, this is yeah. one of our long was this one of our longest days? Like so, Sheldon got out of his seat and just put his piece right there. That's okay. <laughs> Sheldon is the man. <laughs> We are getting towards the end of the program. So I know. This was so what, what would you like to see happen uh, in, in, in the coming days? Um, I, I would definitely like to see more of this. And I would like to see some of the, you know, we, we need to just talk about the, um, how we're going to do some of the uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, those, because I would like to see a couple of those next week where we bring artists together and they uh, talk about different things. Okay, um, that sounds good. Yeah. We could just draw up a little schedule and make sure the artists come in the same time and have a conversation about uh -huh. certain things. I want to group a couple of people together. So uh -huh. maybe we can squeeze one of those in tomorrow. Yeah, but I definitely like this. I, um, I really like this flow. I definitely like this because uh, I feel like Everybody really gets into the groove of this and stay even longer than they would normally when they talk. And, and I liked what we did today where we kind of brought different people up individually and let them talk a little bit about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So definitely like this flow. Um, I feel like we're going to keep, you know, as as it goes, uh, it'll get more and more um, similar. But who knows? <laughs> hey, uh, we're just in week two. And just and kind of some momentum. So uh, I'm glad we're coming up with some things. Yeah, yeah. we got Carla Jones. She's signing off. I see uh, you later, Carla. Look who tuned in. That is Miss Dana Esposito is the lady who's been cracking my behind in the gym. She's my <laughs> personal trainer. So I'm glad she peeked in today. Hey, Dana kicked Dana. in. She said, hey, Poncho. Yeah, I know when I saw when Dana came in. Oh, Carol, uh, what is this? Great day. Oh, see you tomorrow. Carol, Carol must have hung out with us all day. Carol hung out with us, hanging out with us. Thanks a lot. Got Miss Deborah Richards. Yeah, Richardson. We got the thumbs up of approval with our music selection. So that's working out too. That is working out. I'm we're going to build on that some more. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so I think this is a good spot for us to sign off, dear. I think so. I think so. Did you get you some dinner in? I, I ate like part of what I had for lunch. I was in a flow today, so <laughs> but I ate enough. I had a big breakfast. I had my little power shake, so I'm good. Oh, okay. Well, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, I had to take I had to take a break and go feed the masses. <laughs> well, hey, it is it is the weekend, isn't it? <laughs> oh yes. And they we had to I had to sit down and I understand. <laughs> So, yeah, but no, I think this went really well. And uh, I'm just looking forward to the rest of it. I mean, yeah, it, you know, it gets a little, <laughs> woo, but hey, we're making it work. Hey, so far, so good. I, I'm, I'm not going to complain too much because it went very smooth the last couple of days. I know. I like I like being able to, I like it when we are able to kind of break off and actually do some artwork. Um, and I like that better because I get some work done uh -huh. rather than standing yeah. here looking. So, you know, we can get some blocks. You of mean time. standing here looking at everybody else? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, dear. We at the five hour, 40, 57 minute zone. We're going to get ready to get the thing underway. I want to remind y'all of something that was said quite early, and I want you to remember this. This is true.